dictated this. And I find that you really hard, them, right? really hard to accept. But you, but you, but do you agree with them? If if they had said, for example, that October seven attacks were brutal and and massacres occurred, and then they said everything else that Israel is committing war crimes, would you agree with them? I, well, it, okay. Here's what I would honestly say about that: Is Israel not allowed to defend itself? From the <laughs> <laughs> How do you have the gall, sir, to push back on the propaganda? <laughs> care about them? Did they not know that happened? Or do they think perhaps that Jewish lives matter less than Palestinian lives? Ow. I don't know the answer. <laughs> Only they know that. But, but I'm like just going to so put that out there. <laughs> crisis, they've let their political views get in the way of basic perspective and human decency. I think you're well, describing the yourself, the minds traditionally played out through diplomacy and propaganda is being played out online. My next guest has almost half a billion views for his provocative wow. commentary online, making him hugely influential. Hassan Piker streams live under the name Hassan Abi. His analysis of the Israel-Hamas war has taken a highly <laughs> critical stance towards Israel and Western media, and he's been calling me out for my coverage. Because he only cares about Israeli citizens. He does not care about Palestinians as human beings. That's why it's apples to oranges. It's like one side is a human, the other side is a barbaric monster. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so happy this is happening. Also, yeah, props to the uh, Pierce Morgan staff who were like, uh, do, do we have clips of him talking about Pierce? Oh, yes, there's a few. There's a couple. He even does a delightful little accent of him. It's the child. I never said that, obviously. Uh, he says that he liked nothing more than to come on to Uncensored and call me a baboon in a suit to my face. Well, here I am, a baboon, uh, and he can join me now. Uh, join oh, man. <laughs> Oh, the fucking <laughs> angry principal energy coming off of Pierce Morgan right now. <laughs> I'm like, holy shit. <laughs> That's unreal. Uh, Holocene has been. Thank you for the tier one. Appreciate it. Well, that's a start. Bye, Hassan. Hassan, thank you very much, David, coming on. Thank you for having me, Pierce. Uh, it's very early here in Los Angeles, California, but I'm going to try to do my very best to, to not do my British accent while I'm here. <laughs> well, I appreciate that. And listen, I appreciate you coming on. Explain to me why you consider me a stenographer for the Israeli government, given that in the last week, I think more than any other host in the world, I have given lengthy platforms to pro-Palestinian voices to articulate that side. Okay, of can I just, can I just start by saying why is every fucking host like trying to turn this like horrifying fucking world event into me, my story? I'm I'm this I I I'm fair and balanced. Why why would you say I'm fair and balanced, Hassan? Media and certainly the rest of uh, Western media in general. Now, as far as uh, uh, saying that you're a stenographer, I said that journalists are not supposed to be stenographers, and yet when it comes down to it, in most circumstances, in whatever conflict uh, we may be in, there are stenographers for whichever, uh, whichever party is aligning with the American State Department and the interests of the West in general, and Israel happens to be the one uh, in, this, in this ongoing conflict. But it's interesting that you call me a propagandist, because I want to play you... This was your reaction to when the hospital... Oh, wow. Oh, I just... I, I don't know what, like, shit he's got teed up here, you know, that he's going to fucking ambush us on with. <laughs> None of it is going to be great. Got I'm bombed. a propagandist. Well, no, no. For the record. I'm, no, no, I'm not calling I'm you a propagandist. I'm just, no, no, I'm just saying. I'm going to no, play I say, you. I'm saying I am. Okay, well, then... I want to. I'm play saying it. I am I just before you even it. play it. Okay, I'm going to play the clip. This is your reaction to the bombing of the hospital uh, the other night. While I was in the process of, of getting ready for the stream, uh, Israel enacted uh, one of the singular worst strikes they have done thus far. And an airstrike, an Israeli airstrike, hit the Al Ahli Hospital in Gaza City, where thousands of civilians were seeking medical treatment and shelter from the relentless bombing campaign. Now, interestingly, when, that, when you were saying that, uh, I was coming on air too. And I took a position uh, based probably on 30 years of being a journalist, including running major newspapers, working at CNN and others, uh, of waiting. 
I'm just saying I think we should just wait and see. Oh, you sniveling cum. Listen to this shit. Like, <laughs> excuse me, Hassan, and just so you know that I actually use journalistic integrity when I was reporting upon this, I had patience and, and waited before I spoke. And so just, just so you know, you did not, unlike me. What has actually happened here? Get clarification. See who's actually to blame before we start passing judgment. You raced in to assume, as many people did, by the way, including the New York Times, BBC, mainstream media, uh, and, of course, most of the Arab world uh, then followed that this was clearly, uh, indisputably, an Israeli airstrike or Miss Hospital. And yet all the evidence now suggests very strongly that it wasn't, that, in fact, this was a rocket that misfired coming from a... a he must a not be watching Channel 4. Inside Gaza. Look, my point is, neither of us know for sure. But you took to your airwaves immediately because actually... By the way, I just want to be clear because I read the BBC report yesterday on stream. Uh, their findings were inconclusive. Or I wouldn't even say unconscious bias. Your admitted propagandist bias on your part was that you wanted that to be an Israeli airstrike. It suits Oh, and by the way, that's because someone's actually just being more transparent, right? Like if I tell all of you, hey, I'm not a journalist, because I'm not, I'm not. I'm an entertainer on the internet. This this is a stream on Twitch, right? I, I'm not a vanguard. I'm not I'm not the leader of a political movement. Any of that, I, I'm a, an entertainer on the internet. And by the way, uh, you, sir, are a propagandist. What, what you do is you take narratives and then you will, uh, you know, willfully exclude certain parts in order to push an agenda. And that's like not even necessarily... Uh, a condemnation of you uh, if that's your intended goal like you could actually maybe just wear it as a badge of honor if that's the thing that you really want to say or do but it said Pierce wants to have it all he, he wants to be like well I'm the smartest guy in the room I was the only one who said that the Iraq war bad you know so uh, I, I want some snaps for that and then I'd like more snaps now please because I've actually had on you know uh, a lot of guests who happen to be uh, either of Palestinian descent or have relatives who died in Palestine stuff like that so I'm I'm pretty much the best human being alive right narrative and i would say that that in itself in its I way wanted it to be is being a stenographer well you know you accuse me no, of being putting, a stenographer you're i try and be mouth. fair and get to the truth in S your see, case he's, he's doing it right now to do that i think you appeal to your audience appeal to your base this and you unfair. don't really care whether the facts are there or not this is entirely unfair because you just said circumstantial evidence favors that this was not an israeli airstrike yeah. i gave you all of the circumstantial evidence that it does favor that this is an Israeli airstrike. Mm -hmm. The reason why, however, circumstantial evidence is not enough. And the one thing that I will concede to, because when more information did come out, and no, I do not mean when Israel said that they did not bomb mm -hmm. this hospital and it was actually Hamas. And then they turned around and went, never mind, it's not Hamas, it's actually Islamic Jihad. And then they said, we have more evidence coming out in a couple hours. And then the evidence came out and it turns out it sounded like uh, it, it, the, the phone conversations that they were able to intercept, supposedly, uh, sounded like, uh, 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 by experts at the very least, uh, to be uh, completely false and, and uh, completely uh, made up. Yeah, but Hassan, I don't accent. think, I'd listen, Syntax in all, all honesty, now, I now, don't think, wait, even on. as you're Hold saying on, all this, finish. I think you're a smart guy. Piers, let me finish. I think you've looked at all of this, and I think in your heart, you know this was probably not an Israeli airstrike. And I'm just curious why That's... you would, instead of admitting <laughs> no. that as fact no. change... <laughs> oh, Pierce is doing, like, classic Pierce shit right now. You can see the other day, right, when faced with a comedian, for example, Pierce doesn't really have ground to do what he does, which is just consistent moral posturing, right? So the reason why that entire interview kind of, like, flipped the script on him is because if you're just all about moral posturing always, like, you know, I, I know deep down in your heart, in your heart, Hassan, that truly you believe that this was, in fact, uh, Islamic jihadists. I, I know you believe that, but as a propagandist, you want to be able to make money and you want to sell a vision of the future to your children or something like that right uh when it's someone who's like completely exaggerating what you're saying right like all of a sudden if you're like uh oh no no i'm on your team actually i i think that we should just level gaza to the ground and in, in fact i i just i i want to know how, what your numbers are because if they're not high enough i i think we should go even further why not just get rid of all of it uh, like just all of it i mean that's what we're all here for right then pierce can't do the moral posturing anymore because that's just like that's his entire style it's fault I Why? Don't expect you to. Because I just gave you, because I, and not because I'm a propagandist. As far as me being a propagandist goes, everyone is a propagandist. I'm just honest about it. You're a propagandist. We have our I'm biases. I'm curious who you think I'm I a propagandist for. I am honest about my biases. Who do you think I'm a propagandist for? Who do I think you're a propagandist yeah. for? Whichever you're, every, every media person is, is doing propaganda. This yeah, is, but, who, is, but who for? Just, 
a I've got to be dealing with somebody. It, you think it's a bad word? I don't. That's just the difference. This is a semantic I do. I think it's actually quite a serious charge. Hassan, I think it's a serious charge to level, not as a podcaster, but as a. Wait, does Pierce not realize that like propagandists that 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 doesn't mean that there has to be like a shadow cabinet of people who are like Pierce? Today you will push forth this narrative. You must bring on Hasanabi, and when you do, make sure make sure you mention his many many failings. Done. I only asked you because you're the guy that called me a propagandist and called me a baboon in the suit. I was curious as to why. You don't want to say <laughs> I know. Wait, wait. <laughs> wait, wait. <laughs> when did that one happen? Is it, uh, has he already played that clip? Did I miss it? Being the I, propaganda for. We'll move on. We'll move on. I agree with I you. Said you. I said there's a bigger there's a bigger picture here. Let's move I on. Said that Let's take a short you... break. Hassan, let's take a short break. I want to come okay. back. I want to talk to you about what happened on October the 7th. Get your reaction to that. So I like how Hassan is trying to actually reframe parts of this uh, so that people actually recognize the, you know, horrifying reality on the ground. But you can tell Pierce is completely in his element right now, which is that I'm just going to act like the disappointed father, you know, the big daddy media. I have much more experience than you. Oh, I've been doing this for nearly 30 years, Hassan. Do not understand that. What what exactly do, do you know what you're doing? You call me a propagandist. What even is propaganda? Have, have you looked up the word? I'm, I'm Googling it right now. And, and certainly I, I don't work for anyone which like i'm saying when basim uh was on yesterday or i don't know when basim youssef went on the show but when i just watched it yesterday for the first time the reason pierce was just so fucking you know falling all over himself is because you can't do moral posturing when someone is satirizing you if someone is just like standing there and then he's like uh do you do you condemn the actions of hamas and, and it's like oh yeah absolutely yeah uh they're they're terrible uh in fact i feel that we should get the son of a bitches uh i want us to get the son of a bitches like you said i I think Ben Shapiro is the smartest human being that has ever lived. I agree entirely with his position. Uh, I'd just like to know, we should probably discuss a number, like how many people should we slaughter and bomb uh, to be able to achieve our goals, right? So that's that's what we're doing here. At that point, right, Pierce Morgan can't be there. And he's like, the only thing he could do over and over was like, well, I know you're joking. I just, I, I, I just, I just feel this is highly inappropriate, you, you know? I want to just play you a clip of something that you said about the... Uh, October 7th terror attacks, and in particular, the attack at the music festival, which killed 260 people. Look at this guy. You know what shouldn't happen? Killing 260 people at a music festival. No, you're right, man. That just happened on its own because, like, bad guys wanted to do bad things. You're right. Dude, if they f subjugated you to a open-air prison your whole f life, you're going to break out eventually when you realize that there is no other way to get out of it. I mean, it sounds to me there, Hassan, that you are in some way saying they had it coming. Were you? Um, no, I wouldn't say that they had it coming. I think that uh, my this is like uh, what did he say? America deserved 9/11. This is this is part two now that Pierce is trying to do. Michael Brooks used to say, uh, "Analysis is not justification." And while obviously civilian casualties and, and horrific barbaric acts that were committed on October 7 are completely unacceptable, uh, the, the important thing to make sure that it never happens again is to analyze what are the conditions as to, as to how it happened to begin with. And I think uh, Ehud Barak is going to be on uh, mm. in a little bit as well, or maybe he's on before yeah, he is, me. Yeah. Uh, and and I'm and I'm almost certain that while he has held the keys to the conversation and held uh, the the levers of the power in this conversation in many key and critical points, uh, I I would go so far as say that he is among many others who also. They're saying that violence begets violence is not an endorsement of violence. Well, yeah, but see the problem is especially in mainstream media, and this is what a propagandist you know like Pierce Morgan would do, is they have again so much more what they feel is more authority when you start discussing it this way, right? Like as soon as you start having this discussion where it's like, well, we need to just take a step back. If you were to suddenly like you know remove yourself a little bit and look at the perspective from more than simply a one day event, we can actually look at the context of it's like you'll just get responses with. Oh, so you think it's okay that that innocent people, people who weren't even, you know, some of them were tourists, uh, were just, you know, slaughtered indiscriminately while while just having fun at a music festival? Do, do, you, do you think it's okay that children were killed? Do, do you think that's okay? Are, are you okay with that? Right? And then obviously anyone watching one side is, is playing defense on the other end, being like, no, I, I'm not here to endorse any of that. I think that was horrifying completely, just as I think it is horrifying right now that thousands thousands of children in Gaza are dead 
as a result of this bombing campaign that is happening right now. They are leveling blocks to the ground in an open air prison, which doesn't have food, water, electricity. Like, do you condemn that? Oh, certainly. But I do want to say, did you, did you see the footage? Did, did you see it? Did you see what happened that day? Are you endorsing this? Percent of the uh, Israeli population's assessment at the time. Uh, this is years and years and years of refusing to negotiate with the Palestinian Authority. Take, don't take my word for it. Take no, no, listen, I would personal agree, listen, word for it I would in 2019 agree again. in a closed-door conversation with Likud members. He yeah, said listen. that if you want to thwart any kind of Palestinian nation-state, you must do everything you can to only negotiate with Hamas. We control how high the, how high the fire goes. He has given cash to Hamas right. by way of Qatar. Uh, there is no bigger fan of Hamas than Bibi Netanyahu, which uh, I hope one day you can maybe uh, interview and then you'll ask him to... No, no, I, I uh, actually did interview uh, him a few months ago and I, and I did actually spell out to him that there have been a lot more Palestinian deaths this year so far up to the point of the interview than Israelis and what he intended to do about it. He said then he didn't believe in collective responsibility, which... <laughs> so you're willing now to admit that that was, in fact... A lie, right? I mean, Pierce Morgan the other day just lied through his teeth in real time when he was asked. He's like, yeah, did you ever spread the propaganda about the 40 beheaded babies? Did you ever do that? No. You never did that? No. Did Ben Shapiro ever do that? No. Oh, did Ron DeSantis ever do that? No. And it's like, uh, took me 20 seconds on Google. Uh, yeah, all three of you did. All, all three. She's now this hot phrase in this whole uh, crisis about whether you would hold all people in Gaza responsible for Hamas. Interesting to see if Wait, when they... Can well, I ask well, let me just finish you, my point. Do you, do if you they do then they launch that? a ground invasion, it'd be interesting to see if they keep to that word. You know, I'm not a, I'm not a, I'm not a, a defender of what Bibi Netanyahu has been doing in Israel. In, in the last year, his attack on the uh, credibility and integrity of the Supreme Court, I think has been a disgrace. And I think it has fractured society in Israel. I also think that it's caused so much social unrest and had such big protests that you could argue it's taken the eye off the ball of the people who should have been defending the border uh, because they've been trying to sort out what's been going on domestically, internally inside Israel. So I think it's a catastrophic failure of intelligence, of security, of defence, all of those things. I'd be amazed, frankly, if Netanyahu survives this. So I'm certainly not here to defend him, even if you do view me as a stenographer for his government. Uh, my, my, my question for you, I think, is this. Is that I've had a lot of problems trying to get people on the pro-Palestinian side to separate two things. That you can say, as I believe and you believe, that the Palestinians have been maltreated for decades. That the situation where they are effectively... I mean, I don't even call it an occupation because Israelis aren't in Gaza. They pulled out in 2005, but they still control the ability of Gaza. Is, well, see, this is finish. why I call you propaganda. Well, no, 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 no. I'm just saying the phraseology is confusing to me because the reality is Israel exercises control over people in Gaza. It allows them in and out. It allows them to turn on the tap of water and so on and so on. I get all that. They don't actually live there because they can't live side by side That's with each other. That's why it's called an open air prison. Right. I, I don't That's disagree with you. That's why they call it the world's disagree. largest open yeah, air prison. Yeah, but Hassan, I don't disagree with you. And I've I have pointed this okay. out for a long time as a journalist. So we don't we don't dis So and the occupation then? Or or you're fine with it, right? Because it's, oh no no, I'm aware of what you're saying. I've I, I know. Oh, okay. So disagree about the appalling plight of Palestinian people. Um but the issue comes that if you can't separate that ongoing dispute between Israel and Palestine from the absolutely appalling barbarism of October the 7th, which was on a whole different scale to anything we've seen. See, that's that's why you're a propagandist, because if you actually know if it's like, hey, by the way, this is considered the world's largest open air prison. I mean, it's essentially a monstrously huge, incredibly densely populated refugee camp that, you know, has limited food supplies, medical. Uh, and now uh, that has all been cut off. You know, clean drinking water requires fuel to be able to boil, uh, boil it. Their energy requires fuel to be able to generate up to four hours of power a day. Uh, they have rolling blackouts in better times than these. So knowing all this now and seeing what is happening on the ground and just like, let's look at the numbers, Pierce. You've seen the numbers too, right? Because you say you know all this, obviously. So you probably already know about the, uh, at this point, I believe it's over 1,500 Palestinian children that have died in this recent campaign bombing. Uh, you also probably already know that uh, Israel has dropped more bombs on Gaza than the U.S. did in Afghanistan in an entire year. You know that too, 
right? Obviously. Do, do you know that over 50,000 of the injured in Gaza right now are pregnant women? That, that, that's from fucking UNICEF's numbers. So if you know all this, you see it's horrifying. Why are you consistently trying to reframe the whole thing every time you talk to someone in the do you condemn Hamas? But was this attack horrifying? Of course it fucking is. It's, it's like seeing politicians after a hospital was bombed saying, I stand against bombing hospitals. And you're like, so brave. I, yeah, I, I too am anti-explosion. I too am anti-bombing hospital and killing civilians. That that sounds horrifying. All survivors, babies in their in their cribs, you know, young women taken, uh, tortured, abused, shot, beheaded. We, we, it was reported. And, and and is he on the other side of that? Are you talking to someone who's like, uh, yeah, no, that's all awesome. That that's that's what I'm about. On, if we can't look at that collectively, oh. and with a with a, a general humanity and agreement that that is an absolute atrocity, then there's something wrong with this. And I find that the, the tribalism on both sides is now so toxic and so frenzied that you get people- How can you say that? It's like, this is fucking maddening. You can't in one breath be like, oh no, no, I understand what is going on with Gaza and how it has been, you know, basically it is known as an open air prison and how the conditions are deplorable and have been for a very long time. I get all that. Um, I, I'm just tired of how both sides are kind of just, you know, getting a little too angry and, and you know, the fucking, the volatility. And it's just hard to have a conversation about this. By the way, do you condemn the worst, most horrifying, atrocious uh, terrorist act that we've seen since 9-11? Do you do that? This is like 20,000 9-11s, isn't it? People who literally can't. We've had a bunch of actors, right, signing this statement saying they want a ceasefire in Gaza and calling Israel war criminals and so on. But they don't say a word about the Hamas attacks that precipitated this, and I find that you really hard, them, right? really hard to accept. But you, but you, but do you agree with them? If if they had said, for example, that October seven attacks were brutal and and massacres occurred, and then they said everything else that Israel is committing war crimes, would you agree with them? I, well, it, okay. Here's what I would honestly say about that: Is Israel not allowed to defend itself from the? <laughs> How do you have the gall, sir, to push back on the propaganda charge? <laughs> this wasn't even a loaded question. But it's like, well, I mean, I'll meet your question with a very typical slogan that is being used in all mainstream media right now. Does Israel not have the right to defend itself? That wasn't the question. Settlers who are doing an act of colonial terrorism, and this is not my statement on it, this is international law, that are doing horrifying things by simply just existing there and, and maintaining the presence uh, with a, with an occupying force in the form of IDF, who is ritualistically humiliating Palestinians uh, uh, in, in, a, in a structure that B'Tselem, an Israeli organization, calls the permit regime, where every waking moment of, of uh, Palestinians' lives in the West Bank are absolute hell, where they have no legal recourse. 51 Palestinians have died, and that was before the Ramallah uh, the, the Ramallah protest that happened last night and uh, the Israeli forces were uh, opening up with live fire on protesters last night. So who knows what that death toll has become. This is all, this is all a product of Israel being an apartheid state. This is a violent apartheid state. There is no way to be a let, peaceful apartheid state. All right, Hassan, let me ask state. you this. Ooh, that was a really good part. He got a lot of information out all at once without uh, Pierce Morgan interrupting. Uh, I'm going to predict Pierce is now going to have to revert to uh, 40 beheaded babies tactics or human shields very shortly. It is, it is a violence, Let it is a violence this, required for its maintenance. Okay, listen. And that violence is frustrating people. I hear that you. That violence I is radicalizing you. people. But here's Hold my, on. I hear as you. far as Israel, as far as... It, as far as what Benjamin Netanyahu has done, as far as the war government, what they have done, Pierce, going into Gaza yeah. and bombing Gaza and killing 3,480 uh, Palestinians so far in Gaza, 1,000 plus children mm. out of all of those casualties, 22 hospitals being bombed, a bakery, the only remaining intact bakery being bombed yesterday. Um, these are these are horrifying Refugee crimes school, that you would openly ago. say are horrifying and unjustifiable when Russia does it, but when Israel does it, it, Israel has a right to defend itself. This is, 
identical to the same talking points that I've heard from every Israeli administration official. It's the same talking points that I've heard from American politicians championing the, the exact same talking points. It's the same thing that I've heard from everyone else in the media. You might have been against the Iraq uh, war, and, and you use that, but you're using that for, for evil, in my opinion, at this point. If you True. are not sitting here True. and condemning those acts of True. war crimes, those acts of violence, that those acts of collective You're punishment. doing the exact same shit. Well, I would say to that, that I think the death of any child in this conflict is horrific, absolutely horrific. But the question comes down to me, that after an act of terror, as we saw on October the 7th, Israel should be able to defend itself and should be able to go after the people that perpetrated. Are you stuck on loop? <laughs> like, he just explained to you how this is not asymmetrical. You can't even call this warfare. Like, holy shit. Like, the, the, the numbers themselves are staggering. The devastation is staggering. The war crimes are... He hasn't even mentioned white phosphorus or the 70 people who were bombed, who were evacuees, like, just, just trying to do exactly as they were told to do. The forced displacement of 1.1 million people hasn't mentioned any of that. It's like, but it, it just goes back to, at the end of the day, like, do you not feel that Israel has a right to defend itself? What do you say about that? Oh, sorry, I, I gotta check. Have you have you condemned Hamas yet? Have I asked you that? W will you? Will you condemn Hamas? I do know the answer to that. Last night I had uh, Dr. Ofer Kassif, uh, an Israeli Knesset member who was expelled, uh, suspended for 45 days for saying uh, what I believe is the truth. Uh, what uh, is championing the exact same position of the, uh, the Haaretz's uh, editorial board. Um, there are a lot of thoughtful people, a lot of um, uh, formative Holocaust scholars, a lot of historians uh, that all agree on the same point. The reason why violence that even penetrates through the Israeli security blanket that, that people thought existed, that penetrated through that Iron Dome, the Iron Wall, if you want to call it that, is because of years and years of oppression and years and years of violence, which is a necessity to maintain an apartheid state. And this has to stop. There's only two ways out of this. Either you engage in full-blown ethnic cleansing, and if you, if you listen to the likes of Smotrich, or if you listen to the likes of Itamar ben Givir and these very unfavorable, unpopular, mm -hmm. far-right figures, if you listen to Netanyahu and his Likud government, uh, they say, that they are interested in going in that direction, the ethnic cleansing direction, the ethnic displacement direction, or the only way out of this for a real solution is to, to move towards peace, to genuinely have, to genuinely end the blockade, the end the apartheid, the end the occupation, and create a pathway towards citizenship for all people with a right to return for uh, all 14 million Palestinians, uh, uh, 5 million of which live under Israeli occupation. It's brutal. And then the rest living in diaspora. These are not unreasonable requests. Okay, These are requests that under... So Hassan had a bit of a rough start because Pierce was doing what Pierce does best, which is, hey, I've got a whole bunch of clips of you that uh, you're not prepared for, but I'm going to play them. Then you got to run defense by default, right? Because you can't just sit there when you get an out of context clip or something with an implication that, hey, by the way, so this is you saying that they deserve these horrifying attacks and that you think civilian deaths are cool or something. What did you say? Based and or poggies. I don't know what those words mean, but apparently you did use those terms. Uh, that obviously for anyone, that's why Pierce does it at the very start of his interviews. And it's hilarious when he does it, you know, uh, to, to fucking far-right conservative figures because you just see them like Whoa. um but that's just like that's part of his gameplay uh i'm loving this part here the 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 middle half after the first commercial break because I, I feel at this point uh hassan has caught a stride uh understands you know the format and is now you know dictating a lot of the conversation and not letting pierce do that fucking bullshit moral posturing that he just loves to do understand the dignity and the humanity of one you. side and does not simply treat them as their uh, their colonial subjects son, I, and and it's the only way to create okay, permanent I, security listen, and prosperity in the region if it was as simple as that i'm sure that would have happened already i would say this I <laughs> we're all trying to find the people responsible for that <laughs> looking hot dog costume <laughs> Look, if that was actually true, I mean, honestly, if, if that's what people wanted, then you have to understand that surely at this point people would demand that internationally, right? Sim similar to the apartheid state in South Africa. I'm, I'm not entirely sure how that ended or why, but I am going to say that uh, obviously there's, there might be a reason, a manipulation, if you will, a mainstream uh, you know, consciousness. A lot of what you've just said, not all of it, a lot of it. 
I don't think you can ever achieve peace now with Hamas controlling Gaza. I don't think you can achieve peace with Netanyahu in charge of Israel, actually, after this. I don't think his own people will want him to be in charge of Israel down the line when they examine exactly how this happened. But we will see. Uh, but, Hassan, I've got to leave it there. It, look, it's good to talk to you. You know, you're an important, influential voice to a lot of people. Um, and I, I think we have a lot of common ground and there are some things that we disagree about. But I suspect it's not as much as you think. You know, I do think that the core problem here has got to get resolved in a way that's been... I'm really fucking sick of this narrative that you keep getting from fucking... You know, if you want to call him an enlightened centrist, sure, enjoy the title, whatever, whatever makes you happy, right? But this idea that, like, fucking right-wingers on average... Like, Tim Pool does the same shit, where it's like... Why, why do you always want to be like, you know, we agree, I think, probably on most things, you know, we have a couple disagreements, but ultimately I did bring you on here to make you look some kind of, I don't know, terrorist sympathizer at, at the very least. So, you know, thank you for your time. Completely ignored for decades. And until it gets resolved, until the plight of the Palestinian people is resolved, until all these young people in Palestine feel there's some sense of hope and they can get out of what effectively is, as you say, a prison camp, then nothing is going to change. Uh, I don't think it justifies in well, any... I don't, well, let me that. just say, I, I've got to finish it, but I don't think it justifies in any way what happened on October the 7th. But I do agree with you that until that core problem gets it resolved, doesn't. there will never be peace. Uh, Hassan, I appreciate you joining me. Thank you Thank very much. You. Thank you for having me. And so the next, I'll be joined by the former Prime Minister uh, and IDF General, Ehud Barak, who's been listening. Oh, wow. That's, uh, that's going to be quite a, quite a change. I've got a thing for Pierce Morgan. And uh, I'm not the first one to think of this. M multiple people have. But, like, what if, for a second, uh, we didn't have uh, Hamas? What, what if Hamas was not in control of a large region of Palestinian uh, territory? Uh, say, like, the West Bank, where Hamas is not uh, the leading authority there. Uh, then what? B it, does that mean the West Bank is, is never attacked? Uh, does that mean the West Bank is never bombed? Does that mean people aren't shot in the West Bank? Um... This is from today. Uh, Israeli troops killed two Palestinian teens in the West Bank amid Gaza anger. Israeli forces shot dead two Palestinian teenagers near Ramallah in the West Bank Wednesday during widespread protests against Israel's bombing of the Gaza Strip. Palestinian officials said the death brought the toll of Palestinians killed in the latest flare-up of Israeli-Palestinian violence to at least 64 in the West Bank, a sharp uptick in fatal clashes with the army and settlers. Israel's preparing a ground assault on the Gaza Strip in response to the deadly attack by Palestinian group Hamas that killed 1,400 Israelis, mostly civilians, on October 7th. I thought, I thought that part, uh, the entire second half was actually excellent. He let him speak. Uh, he let him lay a case out. And I think it's one of those things where once people have everything put before them, right, once you see the, the, the just like the disproportionate reality of what is going on here, this, this, this shouldn't by any measure be called a war in the traditional sense. I mean, you can call it a war of ideology in the same way there was the war on terrorism by the United States, right? And we all know how that one turned out. But in terms of like, you know, as Michael Brooks has, has spoken about this, the asymmetrical warfare by design, yeah, it, the, the, this is an open air prison that has uh, a party that has... Uh, a population of whom half are children, who many of whom Clean were not alive room. for the original election and then, uh, you know, eventually consolidation of power by this terrorist organization. Uh, and uh, there's also people dying in the West Bank, where, where Hamas is not the leading party. Like, the, there, there is no situation in here in, in which you could see all of the numbers, have everything speak for itself, see the entire situation, and still sit there posturing as a moral authority. Do you enjoy the surfs, but prefer not to have to use your eyeballs? Many are saying this. Well, we've got the solution for you. It's the Surf Times in podcast form, available on most major podcasting networks now. If you enjoy it, please consider leaving a good review and feedback because it really helps the show out, apparently, and it's free, just like the podcast. Thank you so much for watching, everybody. This show is produced by amazing people like you, and if you want to help us out, please consider donating over at patreon.com slash the surfs. The show is made possible thanks to Amazing Fletch, Anna Loves Riley, Ariane McCarthy, Cheryl Alvarez, Doug Cady, Everything Important, Hegbard Celine, Lamedia Panza, Matthew Scarborough, Multimondi, Omni, Peanut Butter Blondie, Political Papi, Quiet185, Rachel K, Riley and Anna, Roller Dragon, Ruby K, Sir Nickus, Spinach Monster, 
Stellar Vision, Sebastian Demel, Tech Tink, Trevbot EXE, Words Greenwood, and not to mention all of the amazing and fabulous people you now see before you.